You're flat broke. Well, things have been a little slow lately. You must go to work. Max, behave yourself. We'll have him back by five. You want me to find a what? A dog. You're the detective who's going to find Max. Max's kidnapping was a well-planned operation. It has to figure that more than just a dog is involved. Timmy, I'm so scared. Don't worry, sweetheart. I keep thinking that maybe there was something that I could have done. That makes two of us. <laughs> Say hello and goodbye to your father, Jennifer. Daddy? Yeah, my first week. Hi, boy. How you doing? Max, behave yourself. We'll have him back by five. days when I'd gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe that's because the right side was occupied and I didn't want to get up at all. But my new temp secretary had called and said I'd better get my butt down to the office or else. And my better instincts told me I shouldn't cross her. You're late. I didn't know I was on the clock. It's 10.30. You're supposed to meet him at 11. Meet who? A. Walter Decker. I never heard of him. You're the only one that hasn't. Huh. My kind of guy. Uh, would you get him on the phone, please? When a man of Mr. Decker's stature beckons, you do not call on the phone. You take the address and you go. I know I asked the agency for somebody very efficient, but you're a little more than I bargained for. Mr. Hammer, I've been through your books. You're flat broke. Well, things have been a little slow lately. You must go to work. You must earn some money. You must pay your bills. You're late already. So get out of here now. Go. Now. Out. OK, OK. Take a long lunch. Missiles, tanks, rocket launchers, warheads. Many would argue that these are what make a mighty nation rich and powerful. One thing's for sure, they had certainly made A. Walter Decker rich and powerful. My camera. 
But at the moment, Mr. Decker had other things on his mind. Now, uh, let me get this straight, Mr. Decker. You want me to find a what? A dog. A black and brown German shepherd that answers to the name of Max. Mr. Decker, with all due respect, I don't do windows and I don't do lost dogs. Why did you call me? I asked my people to find the best and they gave me your telephone number. If you aren't interested, then why did you bother to come here? I work for a living, but it's got to be a case I feel is important. Before you go, let me show you what I consider important. Dusk and down. We have visitors. Let's take a break. Mr. Hammer, this is my daughter, Jennifer. My pleasure. The dancing, too. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. This is Andrea Harris, my tutor. Hi. Mr. Hammer, we've been on the edge of our seats waiting for you to get here. You're the detective who's going to find Max, aren't you? Max? Your dog? Yes. May I see your face? Sure. You have a very strong jaw. Thank you. What color are your eyes? Hazel. That's nice. I remember colors. You're very tense. <sighs> You don't really want to find Max, do you? Well, I, um... Uh, honey, Mr. Hammer may have a very full schedule. We can't expect him just to drop everything for us. We'll find someone. Uh, just a second, Mr. Decker. Maybe we do have the same idea of what's important. Then you are going to find Max? With your help, Jennifer, I'll try. That's the man that usually picks up Max, Mr. Nugent. Excuse me, Mr. Nugent. Max? Max, is that you? Max? Where are you, Max? I don't see him, honey. I don't think he's here. I know. I was just hoping. So, anyway. I turn a corner a few blocks from Decker's place, and this guy cuts me off. So I slam on the brakes, and this other guy rear ends me. And when I get out of the van, pow! Next thing I know, I wake up in the alley, and my jacket's gone. Listen, if you see or hear anything else, give me a call. Sure, I will. Thanks. How are you doing, sweetheart? Mr. Yeah, when I was a kid, I, I had a dog. His name was Ike. He was nothing special like these guys, but we were a team. They used to call us Ike and Mike. <laughs> Tell you what you do. Fill out a missing dog report. Wait 24 hours, I'll put out an APB. <laughs> come on, get serious, Pat. Somebody committed assault, larceny, and grand theft auto just to ruin a little girl's life. I want to know why. Something else is going down here. What do you think, it was Ransom? Decker's a very powerful man. I don't know. Nobody's made any contact yet. Take a look at this. Lab report in the pet van. Came up with a big zero. Dog hair and puppy chow. Well, at least it tells us one thing. They're pros. Nice to see you. What's going on, Barrington? Nothing. Oh, by the way, I understand you're working for Walter Decker. Yeah, I'm looking for his dog. Never underestimate the value of man's best friend. And speaking of best friends, I'd appreciate an introduction. To his dog? To Decker. A little early for you to be looking for campaign contributions, isn't it, Larry? Never too early for that. You could do it this afternoon at his recital. Recital? Once a year, Decker takes over the Gotham Center. Sponsors a benefit performance for the Braille Institute. Anybody who's somebody will be there. Well, Larry, if you become somebody by this Stop. afternoon, maybe I'll see you. 
got to figure a way. There must be some way I can get into that ballet recital. How would you look at a tutu, Larry? I needed to talk to Decker, and so I headed to the recital for the Braille Institute. There was a lot more to learn there than I had counted on. Hi, sweetheart. Looks like you got a full house out there. Mr. Hammer, did you find Max? Not yet, honey, but we're still working on it. Where's your dad? Out front somewhere. I think he's got more butterflies than I do. I'm the one with stage fright. Well, you're gonna be great. Knock him dead, kid. You're supposed to say break a leg. Sounds like my business. I'll see you later. Good luck. something, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, Mike Hammer, my VP International Sales, Norman Summers. How do you do? Oh, yeah. You have something to tell us, Mike? I wish I did. I've got a lot of questions, but they can wait. Look at that grace and beauty. Hmm. Just like her mother. Where is her mother, Mr. Decker? She was killed three years ago in an accident that cost Jennifer her sight. I see. What I'm getting at, Mr. Decker, is that Max's kidnapping was a well-planned operation. It has to figure that more than just a dog is involved. What are you talking about? A man in your position has to have made some enemies. Now, can you think of any reason why somebody would want to hurt you or your family? But everybody makes enemies. I just think you're making more out of this than is necessary. I told you the dog is worth a lot. Worth more than money? Hey, it's been two days now. If somebody wanted money, don't you think you would have heard from them by now? She is. Congratulations. Oh, just, just beautiful. Hope you like roses. Read the card. Jennifer, where are 
sick room. I'll be right back. Nice performance, Miss Decker. Thank you. Are you all right? Yes. stolen. Her grieving father enlisted every bit of help he could call on. Unfortunately, none of it looked too promising. Uh, the taps are in place. Recorders are up and running in the band, sir. Check. Cameron. Yes, sir. Who is that guy? That guy is not regulation. I don't know. I'll check it out, sir. Officer, completely at your disposal, 24 hours a day. Thank you. You are Barrington. Lawrence D. Barrington. Any word on Jennifer? Not yet. I'm trying to call Walter's banker. I thought they might want some money. Well, that's the drill, but it doesn't guarantee it's going to get the girl. Hmm. I'm Special Agent Cameron, and what's your function here? I'm a private investigator. I'm looking for Mr. Decker's daughter. Yes, and you really botched that, didn't you, Hampton? You couldn't find the dog. You lost the girl. You Don't made a take that tone with my employee. I'm sorry, Mr. Decker. I have no idea. May I speak to you privately, Mike? Excuse me, Walter. I need to talk to you. On the veranda. Well, Larry, glad to see you made such a great impression. Hi. How are you holding up? I keep running it over and over again in my mind. She was standing there with me one minute and she was gone the next. Why? What made her take off? I don't know. You know, I keep thinking that, that maybe there was something that I could have done to keep them from taking her. I don't know. That makes two of us. Coming in on line four. Get the tracers open. Charlie, you want to get that? Yeah. This is Walter Decker. Listen carefully. We do not want money. We will accept only 500 Decker Arms Mark IV anti-tank missiles. We will contact you later with details of the transfer. No cops, no tearful interviews on TV, not a word to the press. Do you understand? I understand. But first, you have to prove to me that my daughter is safe. Of course. Talk to your father. Be positive. Okay, Jennifer? Daddy? Daddy, I'm so scared. Get me, please. Jennifer, look, don't worry, sweetheart. Daddy will bring you home. You just do exactly as they tell you. And I love you. Love you too, Daddy. They hurt Andrea? Jennifer, I'm okay. Is Max with you? Yes. But they've done something to him. He's always sleepy. Well, nice going, lady. You blew it. Jennifer? Jennifer? They're gone. And thanks to the lady here, any chance of a trace is gone. But it lays out simple enough. How do you draw that conclusion? There's no way you're going to give him those missiles. He's right, sir. Turning over those Mark IVs would break every arm statute in the book. Yeah, tell them that in Washington, Larry. Some of them haven't heard. No, it's a question of national security. No, 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 it's a question of my daughter's life. Now, I want some options. Oh, they'll give you options, but you're not going to like them. Hey, walk away, Hammer. This is an FBI operation. That's right, you've done enough damage already. Yeah, you and your little girlfriend here. Hey, 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 Mike. Mike, excuse us. It's clear the FBI's priorities are different than mine. I agree. Now listen, you can deliver, but they won't. What does that mean, that there's a chance I won't get Jennifer back? No, I didn't say that. But she represents profit to somebody. 
Now, look, I cannot look in the yellow pages under Merchant of Death to find out who. You're the pro here. Who could handle something this big? That won't be a long list. Good. I don't have long. At the top of Decker's list was an arms dealer named Sandor Kraken. The world's hotspots were his marketplace, and he didn't care which side he sold his weapons to as long as they paid in advance. Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Kraken. Who are you? Well, just say I'm a friend of Walter Decker's. We got a friend of Walter Decker's here. Okay. This way. Down the end of the hall. He's where? On his yacht? Well, good for him. No, no, no. Just give him a message for me. Tell the Generalissimo how much Kraken liked his gift. Uh, don't make that. Sandor. Yeah, that's right, Sandor. Talk to you later. <laughs> now, why do you suppose these dictators keep sending me cigarette lighters in the shape of F-16s? I don't even smoke. I don't know. Maybe they think you're the kind of guy who likes to light fires. Anybody ever give you a cigarette lighter shaped like a Decker Arms Mark IV missile? You buying or selling? I'm not even renting. Who are you? My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. I see. Well, the Mark IVs are locked down tight. They're U.S. government and NATO issue only. What makes them so special? The Mark IV is a heat-seeking missile. Advanced technology, incredibly accurate. Very difficult to uh, defend against. A lot of people want them badly. Badly enough to force a man like Walter Decker to hand over 500 of them for the life of his child? Somebody got Walter's kid? Yeah. Any idea who that might be? Well, I could start at the top. There's uh, Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria. Or I could start at the bottom. Zimbabwe, Zaire. Does that narrow it down for you? You make your point. Most of them would pay a premium price for the missile. But when you talk about kidnapping, I don't know. I deal with governments, not terrorists. What's the difference? Walter and I have done business for many years together. If there's anything I can do for you, please call on me. Thanks. Ah, two of my best customers, China and Vietnam. Must be the morning Chinese barrage. Artillery at dawn. Sounds like business is booming. <laughs> Toughness, it's milk. No, I just don't want it. You have to have something. You haven't eaten a thing. <laughs> Max! Max! Where are you taking him? For his walk, he has to go out. Don't worry, he'll be fine and so will you. You have my word. The other munition merchants on Decker's list didn't bring me any closer to finding Jennifer, but they all had one thing in common, and it wasn't ethics. Hi. I thought you were in my cab. I've been waiting forever. What happened? Decker fired me. He had every right to. I mean, I was responsible. I was paid to look after her, and I lost her. Listen, Andrea, we were both up against pros. We just didn't know it. I'll talk to him. He's not here. Where is he? I heard him tell some FBI guys he was going to the plant. Plant? Hmm? Come on, let's go. Where? You show me where the plant is, I'll find you some place to stay. What about my cabbie? Let him find his own place to stay. <sighs> I'd rather not go in there. Okay, I understand. Sit tight, I won't be long.
Walter, the feds have sealed every stockpile, Broden, Houston, L.A., every source of the Mark IV is sealed tight. Yes? Okay, send them in. The shipment to the Brits, where is that? On the dock at Antwerp. But Turn you it around. Charter a plane. Walter, they're sold. You don't think we Steal can... Steal them back if you have to. I want them here just in case. Just in case you decide to pay off? You'd be making the mistake of a lifetime, Mr. Decker, and it won't save Jennifer's life. Saving Jennifer's life is what you're hired for, Mike. The rest is just business. My business. Let's lock up, Norman. Anything happen to Max? Any more than I'd harm you. The sounds of the city were dying away. All I could think about was a frightened little girl crying in the night. Max had been Jennifer's light in a world of darkness. Time was running out and I knew I had to find her, but I was in the dark myself. How are you feeling? Better. It would have been a sleepless night in a hotel room and I have a long train ride tomorrow. Where are you going? Perkins State College. I used to teach there. I, I don't think I want to get attached to just one child again. It hurts too much. Hey. It didn't hurt Jennifer. Listen, that kid has got a lot of confidence, a lot of poise, and a lot of grit. She's gonna need it to get through this ordeal. And then she's gonna need you. Listen, don't you think you better get some sleep? I don't think I'm gonna be able to sleep. I'm so worried about Jennifer. Andrea, she's gonna be all right. We're gonna get her back. Whoever has her has to keep her alive. Now listen, no train rides for you tomorrow. We are going back to the Gotham Center and you are gonna lead me step by step through everything that happened backstage during that recital, you got it? Yeah. You see, I need you too. Good night, Mike. Good night, Andrew. Jenny had just come off stage. Then the parents and the administrators, they were congratulating her. Then this lady gave her some flowers, and that's, that's when her attitude changed. What do you mean? She was all excited and happy, and then she took off and ran towards the dressing rooms. I followed her to here, and that's when I heard Max barking. And then they pulled her through that door. It's locked. Well, it's supposed to be, at least to the garage. That would have been dangerous for the children. Then how would the kidnappers get in? Who was in charge of security? Roger Jennings. He's from the Institute. He thought his people would be better with the kids. Hmm. Yeah. Are these Jennifer's flowers? Yes. There's a card in here, but it's written in Braille. Can you read it? 
My God, that's why she came back here. What's it say? Max is waiting for you. Go to your dressing room, tell no one if you want to have him back alive again. Did you see what the woman looked like? Not well enough. Well, Roger Jennings better have a good excuse why he didn't. Come on. Play ball! Great, David! Great! Keep running! That's it! Get to first place! Hey, he made it! Give him a hand! That's Jennings over there. Great, great. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Come on, better. Let's go. Come on, better. Good hit. Just roll it back to him. Thanks, mister. Jennings. My name is Mike Hammer. Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the day that Jennifer Decker was kidnapped. Well, we did the best job we could, Mr. Hammer. I mean, that place is a maze. Yeah, well, I can understand about the woman, but how did two guys and a dog get by your security people? I thought I was doing something nice. The lady tells me she's come to pick up her niece. She brought the girl's dog with her. Max? What else was I supposed to do? A lot more than you did. I mean, you were in charge of security, weren't you? Look, can you describe the woman? Early 30s, 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, A shoulder wound. They called an ambulance. Good. Like, that's the man who took Max. His name is Russell. And I've got the key to his kennel. Where the hell you think you're going, Hammer? To talk to my client. Now, will you please get out of my way? Now, listen. You didn't make my job any easier by blowing that guy away. You stay clear, understand? No, you understand, pal. I only take orders from one person, and that's my client. What is she doing here? She's helping me find Jennifer, Mr. Decker. I think I know where she might be. Where? Where is she? Excuse us? Mr. Decker. The tighter I play this, the less chance the FBI can screw it up. But I need time. If the kidnappers contact you again, you've got to stall them. I can't. They called a half an hour ago. What's the deal? We're going to ship 500 missiles to a truck stop in Jersey. Is the FBI involved? Yes. Well, if I know them, they'll be using dummy missiles. That's the plan. They set up a sting. What about Jennifer? The kidnappers are going to have her there for an exchange. I don't believe that for one second. The FBI said they could do that. Yeah. I've heard that to him before. Come on, sweetheart. What's the status of the Mark Force? Uh, they arrived from Antwerp two hours ago. I've had them quietly stashed in the warehouse. I want them crated, loaded, and ready to roll. If this goes wrong, they're my insurance. No, I'm not taking any chances with Jennifer's life. I had the card key to Sandor Kraken's offices, and I remembered the hidden room that he wasn't too eager for me to see. I didn't think I'd find Jennifer there, but I was hoping there'd be something that would lead me to her. Only first, I had to beat the security.
No wonder Kraken kept his little toy closet hidden. He had enough guns and rockets in the joint to take over a small continent. He was obviously a man who loved his work. Kraken had all these instruments of war, but the only way he could round out his symphony was with the Decker Mark IV missile. He didn't have it, but he knew exactly how to get it. I still didn't know where Jennifer was, but I had a good idea where she was going. Victor, this is Tango, over. Roger, Tango, what do you got for me, Cameron? I got Hammer and the lady in custody. Shouldn't be any more surprises, over. I got 10 units working pursuit and intercept. Now the truck is gonna be heading to the George Washington Bridge. If you wanna be in on the kill, pick us up on the Jersey side, over. Telling you he's headed in the wrong direction. Hey, butt out, Hammer. We've had Craig in under surveillance from the beginning. He's just been pinballing through this case. When a delivery goes down, we'll get him. Listen, I've got a dock clearance for JFK. It looks like that's where it's going down. Get in the car. Let's go! This is Decker. Evidently, you don't care much for the life of your daughter, Mr. Decker. What are you talking about? That wasn't very smart, working with the FBI. You expected us to be so stupid to fall for a sting? Say hello and goodbye to your father, Jennifer. Daddy? Yes, honey. It will be goodbye, Mr. Decker, if you don't follow instructions exactly. I will do anything you say. We want the missiles, the real ones. They're ready. They better be. Deliver them to JFK. Freight loading area, 6 South. Got that? 6 South. Half an hour. In half an hour? You're wasting time, Mr. Decker. Now you're going to see how professionals handle it, Hammer. Yeah, well, your professionals are headed out to New Jersey, pal. Listen, if you want to save that little girl's life, get this clunker rolling out to Kennedy. Hey, you don't convince easily, do you? Yeah. No! Oh! around you. We are going to see Daddy. You bastard, where's my daughter? She's quite safe. She'll remain so until the arms reach their destination without interference. Damn you, that is not our deal. Explain the deal to him, Summers, and tell him how it's going to be the next time. You son of a bitch. It's business, Walter. It's profits you wouldn't touch if I couldn't open your eyes. <laughs> Mr. Summers, we won't be needing your services any longer. OK, load him up.
intention of giving her back. They keep her, they keep the missiles coming. Now listen, I want you to get to a phone, I want you to get help. Gun hammer. Having one of those days, huh? It's gonna be a hell of a lot better than yours. Don't be foolish. Believe me, I know how to use this. Mike? It's all right, sweetheart. The gun hammer. <laughs> isn't he? He starts school next week. How long will it be before he's as good as Max? Well, less time than it'll take for Jennifer to forget the horror she went through. Well, she's got grit. She'll handle it. Yeah. Sweetheart, look who's here. Mike, have you met my new dog? Yeah. What's his name? Well, I thought of calling him Hammer, but he answers better to Mike. <laughs> it's a good name. <laughs> 